Swimming Pool Flamingo performance was actually uh, the last performance of the movie that, uh, that we shot. And the idea for that scene came to me actually quite late. Um, initially it was supposed to be just a simple transition shot in the movie, Kang uh, lying on the flamingo, daydreaming about his past life and kind of transitioning us into this natural world of the following performance. But for some time now I wanted to do some kind of a glow-in-the-dark performance and we've been racking our brains for the last couple months trying to come up with an original concept for that. If anything we came up with just didn't feel right and, and in the end it kind of seemed pointless forcing a scene when it was becoming apparent that scene didn't belong in a movie. However, from that concept came the flamingo performance because originally the glow in the dark performance was supposed to be kind of a kind of a dark dream um, it was supposed to be a performance about inspiration or about where 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 drive comes from so the idea was early on in 10 revisions ago in the script that that we would start with some kind of a bed um, and then kind would crawl from underneath this bed and we would have a glow in the dark performance which um, which maybe would have been cool, but it just it, it didn't work for for a number of reasons. However, this daydreaming on the on the flamingo that's that essentially served the same purpose and that worked really nicely. The swimming pool kind just built it in his property in the last year, and it's different than his other art. It kind of clashes with this dark, strange sort of tribal art. It comes in the in the point in the film when Kang is talking about about exploring other art styles in France, and it still is a daydream. It's essentially a daydream where where Kang is floating in his flamingo and he imagines what what the imagination of this flamingo might be as it just bounces back and forth on this on this swimming pool every day. Then towards the end of the scene. I love it that you see a character who's about to dive into the water and then he ends up flying instead of going underwater. And this is about defying expectations, defying standards, defying social restrictions or social expectations or, 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 or even defying nature and science and physics, which I tend to think are all the things that's, that artists in one way or another do. Whew. I hate you. I hate you fucking flamingo. This is so fucking cold. This is so fucking cold. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> I fucking hate this. I can't do this. I can't do this again. Okay, quickly. Now I gotta go down to put the camera on. That's day. I cannot forget when you have to jump in the swimming pool. It's everyone, a lot the cost, but you have nothing body and jump inside the water. And, and in, in nearly hour, it, you, your, your teeth, bup, 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 bup. <laughs> I really, you know, it's uh, touching my heart a lot. It, it, that's why I'm so scary. I think I'm dead <laughs> if I jump in the water. I say, no, I cannot jump water. But in the end, you do. You did in the one hour, nearly one hour in the water to make a film. You make hard for our dream become true. Ah, fuck, fuck, fuck. Ah, horrible, horrible day. Okay, then this is done. The camera for this scene was actually, it wasn't quite stabilized, it wasn't quite handheld. It was essentially a camera on a, on a flamingo boat, as ridiculous as that sounds. It was just another one of the reckless things I, I had to do to sell the performance, but it gives it enough of this floating movement without pans or tilts really, because it's still told from the point of view of this flamingo, which is still, and it's only being moved by water. So we see the entire performance essentially from the eyes of the flamingo until kind goes flying. So unfortunately, I had to, yes, I had to make the sacrifice and sit in the swimming pool in the icy cold water, except I had my hat on, but everything else I was, um, I was, I was freezing cold. So raise the cable higher a little bit. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Okay. So I jump and You will jump and then you will fly, just don't hit the wall over there. The casting for this performance, that was the one casting that I made, uh, not kind. 
I thought of having a clear connection between where I come from artistically and what you do artistically and you know for you it might be changed for me it's a stronger image of being tied with ropes honestly and the ropes are purposely colorful and frankly those ropes were way too expensive but, but I like the colors and then the fur the, the, the animalistic feeling about it it's not quite human it's something dangerous about it there's something beastly about it you're kind of a creature you're not quite human but among that all there's still color Oh, and I've always been a huge fan of the Swedish band The Knife and Karen Anderson from The Knife, um, her solo project Fever Ray as well. And our performance, our flamingo performance, is essentially my personal homage to the music video of Fever Ray's When I Grow Up. And one final thing, on my recent visit to Hazang, where I shot my previous film Love Market, I ended up picking up just a few of those accessories, like this hair decoration that uh, the ethnic minority girls would wear for their weddings, or like a decorative belt with little bells. So this was also an extra element to this costume that nobody's ever gonna notice but I will know that this connects this film with uh, with my previous film I and mean, actually all of my work is you know is always interconnected those little things that, that many people will not notice but but I will <laughs>